While this is booting up, my name is Charlie Eaton, and I'm a graduate student in sociology here at UC Berkeley, and I'm also the financial secretary of the UC Student Workers Union, UAW 2865. We're the 12,000 teaching assistants, readers, tutors at UC. And we've been working with a whole lot of folks around the state, Occupy Education, and another group called the Refund California Coalition. So what I'm gonna talk about today is related to that. This is not my slideshow. Nope. Um, so while that's getting up, I, the, my talk is gonna start from where uh, Professor Paul Pearson's talk ended, where he talked about, you might remember, thank you. He talked a little bit about how really our economic inequality today is an outcome of political power and political inequality in this country. But I actually think, uh, do any of you know Coolio, rapper from the 90s? Um, <laughs> do any of you remember his epic rap anthem, Gangster's Paradise? Or, or it might be Gangsta's Paradise, I couldn't remember. He had a line in that uh, song that I liked so much. It was, uh, Power's in the money, money's in the power, minute after minute, hour after hour. I think that's pretty much what this is about. It's about power is money. And so if we want to undo economic inequality in this country, then what we really got to do is, if we're trying to take that money back from the 1% and give it to ourselves, put it in our pocket, the 99%, we've got to build our own political power. And we've got to do that from the bottom up. Uh, which is something that a few folks have touched on. The question is, how do you do that in times like today? Uh, Cindy just said, well, you know, the person who uh, makes the rules, rules the game. I want to add something to that, which is, I think if you want to make the rules, you got to break the rules. Um, and I think that if we're trying to answer that question, what do we do with Citizens United? What do we do in days where the rules are totally stacked against us? I think it's the Occupy movement that's really given us the answer to that question, that if we really want to do something about this inequality with the rules stacked against us, we got to break the rules. Um, so our, our union, I think, has embraced that answer together with this refund coalition in the, the Occupy movement. And I'm going to talk about kind of three different ways that we've been breaking the rules. And, and I think that breaking the rules is fundamental to going on the offense. Um, so the, and the first way we've been breaking the rules and going on the offense is that we're promoting ideas that break the rules of political discussion. The second is we're building coalitions that grow and strengthen organizations that are willing to break the rules. And the third is we're trying to make the 1% pay for uh, more bottom-up institutions that empower the 99%. And specifically, what I'll talk about is we're really focused on making the 1% pay to refund education. So. Starting with the ideas, I think the most powerful, important, rule-breaking idea is one that's been repeated over and over and over today, that we've got the Occupy movement, and I don't know how the movement came up with it. I don't think it was any one person. It's this idea of the 1% and the 99%. It is an incredibly powerful idea. Also, the idea of occupying Wall Street is a very powerful idea that, by definition, breaks the rules. Um, I think the way that occupying Wall Street breaks the rules is self-explanatory, but it's really important to appreciate how this is a very offensive idea. Essentially what we're saying is Wall Street, you can't retreat to Wall Street, you can't retreat to the country club after bankrupting all of us and destroying our economy. Instead, we're going to come to your doorstep, to your boardroom, and we're going to make you face the crisis that you caused and that you inflicted. And when we make you face it, it's not going to be pleasant. Sorry. Um, and then the idea of the 1% and the 99%, total rule breaker. 
class warfare is what that sounds like to me. And in the past, politically in this country, you say something that sounds like class warfare, the Republicans then say, oh, that sounds like class warfare. The Democrats then say, oh, no, 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 I'm not about class warfare, not about that. Um, but this movement has really embraced, I mean, man, Emmanuel Saez said 1%, 99%, like 100 times in his presentation. We here all today have really embraced this idea, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I don't know if any of you have any of you ever been at a protest where people chant, we are the 99%. It's just very, I can't imagine people going and chanting, we are the middle class. That, it doesn't happen. Um, I think that's a measure of it being a powerful idea. Um, so uh, building coalitions. Oh, I was going to show you a slide. So in case you, you disagree, you think I'm just being anecdotal about the powerfulness of this idea, I stole this slide from the Daily Coast where they showed um, a Pew Center poll. I also looked up a bunch of the other polls. This was one of the most recent ones. So people, the Occupy Wall Street movement, people really support the Occupy Wall Street movement. Um, that's the, the left-hand column here. Um, and uh, even more than supporting the movement, they support the concerns, which I think you can kind of use as a stand-in for the ideas raised by the movement. Um, some people disapprove of the movement's uh, movements, um, uh, the way the protests are being conducted. That's not really the point of my talk today. Um, so if you have questions about that, you can ask them later. Uh, so building coalitions. Refund California is a, uh, let me say what it is, what it is not first. Refund California as one kind of key coalition in this state that we're part of is not a coalition of progressive political powerhouses. Not at all. We've received some support from CTA, some support from SEIU, two really big unions in the state that I would call political powerhouses. And uh, um, I hope they'll give us more support and that they'll get more involved. And I think it's great that uh, they do good things, but that's not what this coalition is. Rather, this is a coalition of groups with very deep ties to communities that have very little money, um, but we do have some money. And what we have a lot of is we've got a dynamic grassroots, we've got diverse ideas, we've got comfort with very flat horizontal decision making, and we've got a willingness to break the rules because we have less to lose by breaking the rules. Um, so who some of these folks are? These are ACE activists. They're members of the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. Uh, they've been fighting foreclosures in their own low income and poor communities, fighting for living wages. Students, a lot of the people in the room, this is here at UC Berkeley. Um, teachers, the California Federation of Teachers, the smaller but increasingly influential um, union, which uh, um, really pushed the millionaire's tax. This is some rank and file teachers putting up banners over a freeway overpass. So these are the folks we are. And we got together these folks back in September of 2011, um, and we said, how do we take a kind of nascent version of this? Occupy wasn't even around yet. We said, how do we take like a nascent version of this uh, Occupy idea, make Wall Street pay idea, and how do we apply it to the fight here in California? And we came up with this idea for this refund California pledge. We said, where could we find some people who are really screwing up the education system with ties to Wall Street? And we looked around and we thought, the UC Regents, perfect. Uh, you know, down the line, all of them ties to Wall Street, whether it's uh, Russell Gould, the former CEO of Wells Fargo, or Dick Bloom, the largest commercial real estate, uh, um, the chairman of the largest commercial real estate corporation in the world. So we said, let's go to those folks who say they're supposed to be committed to education, and let's ask them to commit that they, as Wall Street folks, will support paying more in taxes to fund education. And we, we went to them with these five things that they could do that would make Wall Street and the 1% pay more. Increase income taxes on the wealthiest, yada, yada, yada. So we said, let's do that and let's have some big campus protests. We'll do a week of action around this on November 9th. And we put together that idea and we put together these diverse groups with our diverse resources. And I think a lot of you know what happened. This is what happened. We had 
10,000 people in the streets uh, on the day of November 9th. They came back out again on November 15th, uh, the following week to protest the police beatings of people here at UC Berkeley. And then again, folks came out the following week uh, to protest the pepper springs at UC Davis. So explosive. Um, now, this coalition, it's not just about winning, you know, winning these gains, getting more money for education right now. The benefit of this coalition is that it's also making these organizations with deep ties to the grassroots more powerful. Um, and we're already seeing benefits of that. Uh, you, you know, whether you like the new version of the millionaire's tax that's going on in the ballot or not, the California Federation of Teachers, which really pushed that and was part of this coalition, has become a much more influential group. ACE, the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, is having more success than ever pushing anti-foreclosure laws in this state. Uh, our union, the Student Workers Union, we're very close to getting a law passed in California that we couldn't get out of the legislature last year that will double the size of our union by extending union rights to student researchers in the UC system. We're gonna go from 12,000 to 26,000 workers in the UC system. So this is some real stuff. Um, and I just wanna close, and, and here at Berkeley actually we have a student government election coming up. The, I think that the UC Student Association has really increased its influence in the last year. And there's a student government election coming up when we're gonna have the opportunity to vote for a new uh, slate, the Students for a Democratic University, that wants to take the resources of student government and really put it into these kinds of fights. There's also some great candidates running for CalServe, and if we vote for those two groups of candidates, we've got a good chance at getting an even more dynamic and powerful uh, student movement and student association. Now I will close. So the thing I wanna close on is why prioritize refunding education? Well, the main reason that I would argue for prioritizing refunding education is that funding education and making Wall Street pay for it is something very popular. People in America are broadly already there. Um, and our education system, as many of us in the room know, it does a lot more than just teach people. Folks learn to become citizens. We get healthcare services at the Tang Center, schools and Kids in elementary school get school lunches. And I think we can broadly expand a lot of, to make more universal a lot of important social services by mobilizing this existing broad public support for refunding education to expand a lot more social goods, social services through our school system. Now, we've got a concrete way to do this here in California to take a first step. There's this new tax initiative. ART has the petitions for it. You can sign them. But if it goes into effect, I think if we want it to pass, people gotta know that the money's gonna go to something that they like. And so we're putting forward a higher ed for the 99% budget package that will say the $9 billion in new revenue from this initiative, which is $2 billion more than the governor has said he needed to balance the budget without cuts, a good chunk of that money needs to go to higher education. There's $1.8 billion from that uh, initiative right now that's earmarked to go to an unnecessary speed up of payments to guess who? Wall Street. That's not the people who need to be paid back and who are owed in our society. Um, Instead, I think we need to use that 1.8 billion in other revenue to roll back tuition hikes. This uh, higher education for the 99% package is something we're, that we're gonna be rolling out in the next week. And if you wanna get more information about how to be involved in that, you can go to the refundcalifornia.org website. Um, and I think it's just the first step. We're gonna have to go federal and much bigger with this stuff. But this is the kind of bottom-up way that I think we're gonna take the steps needed in this long fight to get where we want in reversing inequality. Thanks. Thank